it's all correct and everything's ready. If you, like, your physician's form, immunization form, parent authorization form, anytime you upload something, it takes away what you already had on there. So make sure that if you, you know, for some reason, um, you know, I've had some people that just sent in their, in their cards, um, so it's marked as incomplete and they think they can just sign the, um, you know, assign the parent authorization form, but when you upload that, it takes away the card. So now the cards aren't there, now just the signed thing is there, and I need both. So you need to, um, you know, make sure that you either put it together and then send it, or, um, you know, just send one sheet so that it's all there. And, and how you doing that? Yeah. So since we're on the health topic for a second, um, our nurses are, are you know, Paula is returning for us. We um, have them communicate directly with you, um, you know, if there's something to communicate about. Um, so please, but please don't think that doesn't mean Dewey or I don't know what's going on. But since the nurses are the, you know, the first line of defense, so to speak, and they're the ones that are seeing your son if he's not feeling well or talking with him, um, please feel comfortable and confident that both, both we have a, uh, we have competent nurses that are experienced and they can handle this. But also, please feel comfortable and confident that we know what is going on. But we don't. We feel completely comfortable with having Paula speak to you. Um, it is not a lack of concern on our part at all. Um, and if it you know escalates to something where your son's going to the doctor or the hospital, you will of course hear from Dewey or I. Um, and but um, you know, generally speaking, uh, we want you to talk to the nurses because those are the ones who saw your son most recently in his current condition. Um, so please, uh, you know, please do understand. That. So you probably will not be able to see this at all, which is perfect, because I thought I made it big enough, but. Um, okay. So, uh, perfectly small lettering for everybody. Um, but we, what, we, what we wanted to do with kind of the last part of our session here is, uh, there's obviously a lot of information out there for parents about what to do, what not to do, as far as camp and talking to your kids and, um, you know, Everyone's an expert, of course. Uh, Doing that, I wanted to relate with you our experience and give you some tips we think that will help you uh, as you uh, suffer your separation anxiety from sending your son away for the first time, um, and un you know understand uh, and hopefully get comfortable with your son being in our care for two, for you know hopefully eight weeks into the summers to come. Um, and there's, there's there is some really good solid advice here. Um, uh, uh, on a couple of main points, and, and I'll let Dewey, you know, discuss these with you. Um, but please keep these in mind as you're getting ready for camp, because for us, at least with boys, these are kind of tried and true methods that have worked uh, very well. Getting uh, boys, particularly ones with a lot of anxiety and fear of homesickness, and then ultimately some homesickness when they get to camp, these things help. Um, okay, but. but let me, let's understand that if your son has anxiety about camp, he will very likely be homesick at camp, okay? Whether it's a day or three days, that kind of depends on how, you know, how, how his experience is as he, as he gets to camp. It's very individual. What your son will absolutely hear from us, from our staff, is that being homesick is okay. It is not a bad thing. It does not mean you are, you are bad, that you're doing something wrong, or that camp's going to suck for you for the rest of your time at camp. Okay? Being homesickness and understanding that you can get over it and learning that missing home and having fun at camp don't not, do not need to be mutually exclusive activities and that, that you can do both and really have a great time even though you're missing home a little bit or missing your dog or whatever it is that they're missing. Uh, those things are, are normal and part of camp and part of why your parents are sending you away. And that is all your son will ever hear from us that how he's feeling is okay and, and normal. Okay. I always tell the kids, and this is really true, that I am um, a homesick all the time because I always miss my mom <laughs> and always she's there in Cincinnati, my mom and dad. So I'm a functioning homesickness person. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I always try to relate with the kids that way because it, it, it's true. But um, our everyone suffers homesickness in one way or the other, um, and what we try to do is. Um, you know, keep the kids busy and keep them working through it. And no, like Matt said, and I just had this discussion with one of my good friends' um, daughters the other day, she loves camp, but she's homesick. 
And I said, but that's okay because you're making it through. This is what you're doing, you know, like this, you are doing this and you are seeing that it's okay, I'm homesick, but I can still have fun and I am still having fun. So that's what we're gonna, you know, work with um, your, your kids and your sons. And um, I think our staff is really, really good at it, um, keeping them busy and keeping them engaged and really just trying to work through and, and listen to them. Um, and so some of the things that um, we always like to say to you guys to make sure that you're setting them up for a good thing because sometimes as a parent our, exam our anxieties come out in our children even though they didn't have that anxiety in the first place, you know, and I'm, and I'm guilty of it too, I'm, you know, you're always saying like, watch out, don't do that, don't, you know, like be careful and those things like our kids our kids are so good at and so smart and like they know how to gauge each other but it's us that are a lot of times holding them back so you know we just really want to um, work with you guys and work with with your kids so one of the best things um, advice is this first one that says involve your children in the decisions the big and small decisions like what kind of shampoo do you want to bring to camp even though that you just want to go out and buy that at Target and be done but it gives them ownership of what they're bringing to camp. So like, what kind of clothes do they want to pack? What kind of toothpaste might they like? Um, so just kind of those, and, and, and also, it helps with them keeping track of their things because then they know it's theirs. A lot of times, parents will go out and buy new things. I'm not really sure why, because why send new things to camp? <laughs> like, they're just gonna get ruined and whatever, but um, have them know what they're bringing to camp. So Particularly they, clothes, right. because literally, if it's a new shirt, understand what's going on. They're throwing on the shirt at 920, and particularly if they're coming second session, it's like an 80 degree day, the first day of camp, they're taking that shirt off at 925 <laughs> and leaving it there, and they never knew that shirt was theirs. Right. Because they ne it's not like they're looking at what they're putting on, it's right. the first one in the drawer, throwing it on, taking it off, Oh, that's not my shirt. I've never seen that shirt before. And it happens all the time. All the time. I'm lucky enough that all my a lot of my kids' stuff says Kuaga on it. So I go to school and I'm taking out, looking in the last found. I'm like Kuaga, Kuaga. <laughs> like it's all our stuff. Um, so anyway, make sure that you're you know making sure that they're helping you in that. Make a plan for correspondence, which we just talked about. How you know how they're going to write to you, what they're going to do. Show them the envelopes and show them the labels that you might make to send to grandma and grandpa or. You know, I'm gonna mail you on this day and you know, kind of just make a plan with them. Do not ever tell your kid that you will talk to them on the phone because you won't. We don't allow them to talk on the phone and for a couple of reasons. Like, what? Oh, yeah. is that number five? Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it was together with correspondence. Um, okay, well that's different than what I'm saying. Yeah. But anyways, all in the thing. Um, you, we don't allow them to be on the phones except for if it's their birthday and even then, Sometimes it's if it's a child's birthday and I think that it's gonna not be um, good for them or healthy, um, then we might make a plan to talk later, you know, or whatever it is. Because the phone call can just cause a lot of, um, a lot more anxiety than that, that needs to be, where you guys can certainly call me and I'm gonna be honest with you, if your child is homesick and crying, I'm gonna say they're homesick and crying. If they're homesick but doing well, I'm gonna say that. So I'm never gonna to lie to you and say, no, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. Because I want to be truthful with you so that we can work together, we're a team. You know, we're all a team. And so we're gonna to work together with you guys and maybe there's some things that you've done at home that work, maybe there's some things that I'm doing, you know, and that, so we're, we're all gonna to work together. So I'm always gonna be honest with you. But to skip down to number five, Never make a deal, especially before they go to camp. Don't say, like, if you don't like it, I'm going to come pick you up. Because that's the worst thing you can do, because you want them to fight through it. It's part of perseverance. They're going to fight through this, and they're going to get through it, and maybe they won't, and maybe they're going to be homesick the whole time. But then you can say to them, you were homesickness, but you had homesickness, but you made it, and you did that. Aren't you so proud of yourself? Like, you want to be able to say that. And if you say, I'm going to come pick you up, we have no leverage it, at all. It really undermines, more than anybody else, it undermines the counselors that are trying to work with them uh, initially, because in the back of their mind, no matter what the counselor is saying, uh, well, I, I don't really have to listen to this or work through it because I know I can go home. It really undermines their footing to just get your son um, with, with the acknowledgement that he, where we, where we are where we're at. We're going to be at camp. Now let's figure out how we're going to do this together at camp. Um, you know, we put a lot of things in place to help our counselors, of course. The number one thing being that your sons are busy from, you know, the very first day. We, we do a full out capture the flag game the very first night of camp. They are running around for two hours the first night of camp. 
and then we don't really stop until Friday when the counselors are begging me for a little, you know, the, the, the kids are complaining when they need a rest, you know, like, so that first week, we are running. Um, yeah? I would think it's kind of related, but what is your guys' system in terms of, like, how frequently you meet with the counselors to double check, you know, to keep, you know, they're, they're still younger counselors. I know they've been through it, but as they want to, like, is there emotional things? Right. Like, is so, it, like, every day? Or? Right. So, um, the counselors fill out forms, um, once or twice a week on your campus, and then they're turning those into me. So then I'm seeing everything that's going on in the cabin. We have chiefs that meet with their um, counselors, you know, pretty much daily. But Matt and I, that's what we do best. We like to be out and around mm -hmm. camp. So we're seeing, I'm walking around the mess hall, I see what's going on. Then we meet with the counselors every Sunday, but our counselors have the ability to come in anytime. Or if I know a kid is sick, then I'm going to that counselor, if you're homesick, and then I'm going to that counselor and saying like, what's going on? How's it going today? All that stuff. So we, and then plus we, I mean, we have a, we have a tremendous staff. We so really do. Layers, yeah, there's, there's, a there's a lot of layers that are going on. Part, so part of what's happening also, and sorry, but on the, on the daily basis is the chiefs, one of their main duties is to check in with every cabin every single day, whether that's walking by at mealtime because your kids sit with their cabins at mealtime, or walking into the cabins during like a rest hour, or particularly late at night, uh, right before bedtime, because that's a great time to kind of see how a cabin and campers are doing right before bed. You really can catch the, the, the homesick kids then really well because they're, they're really basically too tired to, to put up a facade anymore if they're struggling. Um, so they are walking around all the cabins and checking in individually with the counselors, how's everybody doing? And that's, so that's kind of our first line of defense, and that's daily, multiple times a day. And then, particularly early on in the summer, we're checking in with our chiefs every day amongst our other staff. We check in with our chiefs every day. And then what also happens is so the chiefs have the huddles twice a week. We meet with the chiefs every Friday. And then, and then of course, we meet a full staff on Sunday. So, so there are multiple layers. Um, the idea being mostly, to, just to put it in layman's terms, we're trying to make sure nothing slips through the cracks. And that's what the counselors are told, that the details matter, and checking in regularly matters, that the, the bi-weekly forms that you're supposed to fill out matter. It, it's multi-layered so that nothing is just slipping through, because particularly with homesickness, a lot of our kids are good at hiding it. You know, they know who's looking for them, and they don't really, make, you know, they're not confident yet necessarily in the person or the counselor that they're with, and they need some time to develop that comfort level to show their emotions, so they'll hide it. So the only, those kids will slip through the cracks if you're not on top of it, and I feel very strongly that we are on top. Yeah. Are you a little more on top of the littlest kids? Yeah, I mean, that, that multi, and, and be, first of all, there's four counselors to 10 kids or 12 kids. So that's the first way we're more on top of it. There's just a higher degree of supervision at that we'll get. So, and, and then with those four counselors, so you're saying it's not like there's four 17 and 18 year olds in the cabin by themselves. Those four counselors is a mix of a senior counselor, so somebody who's usually 20, 21 or, or up, uh, what we call a senior counselor, someone who's you know 18, or sorry, 19 or 20, and then usually two junior counselors. So it's also a mix of senior level staff with junior level staff um, all together. But as you can hear, our junior counselors do pretty well with the kids on their own. Um, but there's a lot of supervision just built in because there's just more counselors, you know, two kids to a counselor uh, in those cabins is the main thing. But uh, yes, there's more supervision for the younger kids, absolutely. You don't switch counselors. Right, so, so the question was, do, we, do counselors kind of move around? Um, cabin counselors are cabin counselors for the entire session, for sure, and mostly for the whole summer. Like, I don't even like to move counselors from age groups or cabins, even in the session, even though kids are coming and going. So I'm, I'm kind of against that, too. So maybe a handful of counselors will switch just because they need or what have you. But your, cab, your son's cabin counselor is his cabin counselor the entire time he's at camp. And that includes rookie campers, Full session campers and on. As well as those that are assigned to that cabin, the rest of the campers, you don't switch campers at all. Correct, yeah. The cabin, yeah, no, God no. Once once I <laughs> once you make a cabin, that cabin is been set and yeah, we're not we're not unless there's like four weekers leaving, then new four weekers right. will come in for the second. There might be sessional changes. That's it though. Like if they're in, they're in. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that yeah. gosh. So anyway, yeah, so back to, you know, you just don't want to make the deal of the leverage, you know, for them to say they're going to come home. You know, just tell them that you will be in contact with me if there's any 
problems, you know, another thing you want to make sure that you tell your sons to advocate for themselves. If they are feeling homesick, then they should seek somebody out. And if it's me, or if it's Matt, or if it's their counselor, whoever it is, there are multiple, multiple people that they can reach out to. If they have a headache, or their throat hurts, or their stomach hurts, tell them, like, you have to speak up, you have to say that to somebody so that, that you know, that they're taken care of. So it's very important to teach your kids how to advocate for themselves while they're at camp. If somebody in their cabin isn't being nice to them or whatever, they should they should tell somebody so that we can take care of it because we don't allow bullying at the camp. We Our kids, for the most part, are very, very nice kids and they get along really well. Now, I do want to say that when they're little and their first time at camp or even older, sometimes it's an adjustment to learn to live with people. So how many of your kids share a room with their brothers and sisters? Probably not a lot. So they, they're learning to share space at camp, and that can be a really hard thing, like how to you know navigate if someone's stepping on your bed or stepping on the rug or you know somebody's messy, you're really tidy. That's all an adjustment and a good lifelong skill so that when they go to college, that they'll be really well adjusted to the person that they're gonna live with. Like, but, like right, <laughs> like my roommate. Um, so, <laughs> Um, so anyway, it's you know those are adjustments. So there are, are there going to be little nitpicky fights? Yes. But are our counselors going to help them work through it? Yes. They're going to give them help them have the skills to negotiate with each other. They're not going to just you know do it for them. It, that's part of camp is learning to talk to each other and work things out and, and compromise. So, so I want to address number four, which if you can't read it because it's small writing, it says share personal anxieties with a trusted adult and not your child. Sorry, there's a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So, a, a couple of things. The, the, the bulk of the training is we have a staff pre camp week that uh, runs basically the full week, a little bit more than a week before the, the boys come to camp for a session. Um, and that is a pretty much all day, every day, multiple sessions of just training them on how to look for it, how to handle homesickness.